what I like to think of is my opposite hand is like um, my guiding arrow. So if I'm in the skin and I'm having trouble finding my vein again, this hand is free. You always wanna have a working hand and a free hand if possible. As medics, we learn over time you only have one hand ever. So you gotta do what you can with what you've got. But if I'm having trouble, if I have my IV catheter here and I've lost my vein, I can use this opposite hand to go again and start feeling. And at that time I can redirect my needle using my arm as my needle. It's not just your hand. You are an extension of that needle. If your patient is facing straight on, you should be facing straight on. If they're at an angle like this, you should be at an angle. You always want to be moving with your patient, not reaching over your patient, reaching over your hand. That not only will overextend you, but can cause pain to your patient or uh, can set yourself up for accidental sticks, which you don't want. So this is the bevel of the catheter, this small sliced out piece. This is the part that's going to give you the flash once you enter the vein. Seeing as how that the catheter is set back from the end of the bevel, when you initially get a flash, that's just this small part at the end receiving blood into it. That is why when we poke our patients, once we get a flash, we flatten our IV needle out and then advance it forward a little bit so that it's setting back onto the catheter. That bevel is creating an opening in the vein for the catheter, when you watch, to slide over the end of the needle. Here's a tip. So let's say you get underneath the skin and oh my goodness, you lost your vein. We need to refind it. Instead of digging around or what we call fishing, I have a quick tip to show you how to redirect your needle uh, and not cause your patient a lot of pain, okay? So let's say we've poked and we're underneath the skin and oh, our vein is all the way over here. Instead of with half of your needle in and moving it to the side, looking at that, think about how much skin and tissue you're shearing and how much pain you're causing your patient. That's called fishing. What we wanna do is you wanna draw the needle back until it's almost out of the surface of the skin and then move your hand to redirect and then go back in. If we need to move again, pull back, almost out, and then redirect your hand again and go forward to find the vein. Press forward, oh, we got a flash. Then we can go ahead, flatten out, move forward, and then catheterize, pull out, and this is where we would tampon on. No fishing. So we also wanna talk about the ways that you can find a vein, ways that you can feel a vein. There are three ways that are the best, that are the most beneficial. The three types of veins that we're looking for when we're trying to find an appropriate spot are ranked in order. The first type are ones that we can not only see, but we can also feel. And by feel, I mean when you cross over a vein, there is a soft squish or bounce that you can feel. Try and use your most sensitive finger and use that finger every single time. So our first choice would be one that we can see and feel. Our second choice would be one that we can't see, but we can feel. So when you start moving across the arm, you start to feel a squish in the arm and you can start feeling that circumference and that bounce back, that squish of the vein. Third type of vein that we would prefer and our last choice basically of what we would like is one that we can see but not feel and those tend to be wrist veins or anything really in the forearm. Those are kind of our last ditch effort if we can't see anything else and they tend to be smaller catheter size such as a 22 or even a 24. So ones that we can see and feel, ones that we can't see but we can feel, and then ones that we can see but not feel. The more obese your patient may happen to be, you need to push a little bit harder because you have more tissue to pass through. So usually it will be not just right under the surface but maybe a little bit deeper. But we also wanna think about how thick skin is. Skin is not very thick. So we don't need to go at some crazy angle in on our needle. It's basically just to get under the skin and to poke quick hard and fast. Once we are in, 
Those nerve endings are at the skin level and also surrounding the vein. So usually once you get into the skin, we shouldn't be causing a lot of pain to our patients once we're in the skin. And at that time, we can readjust a little bit. Sometimes, ones, uh, veins that we can not see, but we can feel, sometimes we lose them after cleaning. So before you clean the site, you can use anything that happens to have a, um, any kind of depression in it. What you can do is lightly press it up against the skin, rotate back and forth where you found the best place to poke your patient. When you remove that, you'll have a small raised area that you can clean and it will still stay there and you can use that as a target to aim your way. So direction of vein is also very important. Not everyone's veins run up and down like the center vein does. Sometimes they run at an angle such as this. At that time, you wanna make sure that you are appropriately aiming your catheter, whether you're aiming here at an angle or here straight forward. We also wanna make sure that we have enough of that vein available to us for the catheter to sit in. So you always wanna feel where your vein starts and follow up your vein, feeling where it ends. You always wanna start your IV at the point where your vein starts so you can make sure you have enough room for your catheter to sit in and therefore your IV is more effective and less likely to slip out. And some veins also are cannot be straight just like this one is or this one is. Sometimes they're set at squiggles. So what we wanna do is start at the bottom and try and hold taut as much pressure to try and straighten out the vein the best that we can. When you have a hand, you wanna start your tourniquet usually down here, not too close, just a little bit further away. Now, hand veins are very surface. You don't need to go at very steep of an angle to find your vein. Also, they're bony and they have a lot of nerve endings in them, so it's more painful for the patient. There's a few ways you can hold the hand. You can curl the, you either have the patient just hold your hand like this, or you can kind of curl the hand under and it's always a good idea to angle down so that you can come up at the vein at a more straight and on the same plane as the hand itself. So we're starting at an angle, get our flash, and this is what a flash looks like here. Flatten and move forward. Then advance our catheter. Pull our needle out slightly while putting tamponade on the patient and removing our needle and slam dunk into our sharps.